Hi, and welcome to the Caring Solutions Show. My name is John Hoagland. I'm the general manager of the Caring Presence, a provider of non-medical in-home care. Each week, the Caring Presence sponsors this show called the Caring Solutions, which is intended to bring to the community information about products and services that are available for better living. Each week, we hope to bring someone to the studio here or go out on site to talk to them about products and services that range from durable medical supplies that go into the homes to uh, hiking to birding to recreational opportunities to uh, funeral services, organ, organ donors, financial services, insurance, everything that you can possibly imagine. I think our guest today is probably the 86th guest we've had on the show, uh, something like that. And uh, we would welcome any, op uh, any recommendations you have for people that we could have talk to. As I said, we can either bring them here to the studios or go out on site and be specific about their products and services. You can watch our show on Monday evenings at 7.30 and Saturday afternoons at 3 o'clock here on Access 13. Today we have with us David McAtee, who is the Community Relations Specialist with the Yavapai County Community Health Services. David, welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, heard you speak last week, David, and the, the county has a plethora of services available that I would suspect most people aren't aware of. So yes. uh, tell us a little bit about uh, you and the overview, of the, and then we'll get into some questions. Okay. Uh, as you said, my name is David McAtee, and I work for the Yavapai County Community Health Services. Uh, we have offices in Prescott, Prescott Valley, and in Chino. Um, basically, I was hired as the community relations specialist and public information officer because the county had two very specific uh, needs or, or goals they wanted to achieve. Uh, one of which was they wanted to get the word out about the services that they offer. Um, as they started asking people about other services that they offer, they discovered that a lot of people don't know just half of the many services that the other oh, community, community yeah. health services offers. The second goal was they wanted a public information officer. They had a, a part-time public information officer, but they wanted somebody who would really get out in front of the news, the media, and let them know beforehand. Uh, for instance, when we recently had uh, West Nile virus in the state, we sent out a, a media release to the, the uh, local news organizations and let them know that here's what you do uh, about mosquitoes, because that's where West Nile comes into us. Uh, is through mosquitoes and here's how you can avoid mosquitoes on your property uh, what to do how to prevent them uh, mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. establishing themselves so the the county really had two goals get the word out about our services and sort of be proactive with the, the media and that's where I came in uh, I've okay. spent the last eight years working with local media in uh, this county okay. and uh, so just using some of the relationships that I've developed and marketing skills to do just that, get the word oh, out okay. to the public uh, about the services that Yelva County offers. Well, you're kind of like the president's press secretary then. Sort of. You for the health. get up there in front of them and tell them what's really going on. Right, exactly. Supposedly. For the health department. Yeah, the health the, department. Yeah. yeah, well, that's good. Yes. That's good. Well, it's important, I would think, that, a, that a, a governmental service like that is proactive about getting the right information out not only about things that are current and, and happening, but also about products and services that right. you offer. Right. Uh, tell us about, um, we were talking just before we started about the clinic. Yes, the, the clinic, we have a, a sort of unique situation. In fact, the, we're being looked at by the federal government as sort of a, a program because we combine our medical clinic along with uh, our public health education and uh, facilities, that, uh, stuff like that. And really, we're unique in that sense because most people are either just a clinic or they're just public health and education. Um, we actually share a building. Uh, so, for instance, if a patient comes into our clinic and the doctor notices that he's a smoker, uh, they might actually offer them some information on smoking cessation. Uh, so it's a unique situation like that. And really, the, the most important message that I can get out to the public is, is that the health department, the health uh, center, is for everyone. It's not you know, just for a specific group of people. Anybody can come and visit us. We have some really nice facilities. Uh, we just opened up a brand new location in Cottonwood, um, which has just got some spacious, well-lit, naturally lit uh, exam rooms, high-tech stuff developed, designed specifically for the Cottonwood uh, population. Hmm. So uh, we not only do medical, 
uh, in that same facility and in Prescott Valley as well, we also have dental. So if you establish us as your primary care provider, <clears throat> you're eligible for dental. Uh, a lot of access and, and programs like that don't include dental. Uh, right. When you come to the Hounick Health uh, Department, uh, dental is included. Uh, it's part of that, that uh, package, if you will. We also offer counseling, hmm. um, psychiatric help, um, as well as uh, just general counseling. Sure, uh, sure. Well woman health checks uh, for, for you know, women of that age. Um, as well as reproductive care for both men and women. Uh, we do, we've got the whole package. We, we're not just for, you know, the, the uninsured or the underinsured, mm -hmm. uh, those on access, which we love and we take, you know, happy to take those people every day, which more and more doctors aren't, but we, we're just here for everybody. Okay. Uh, we have a sliding fee scale, so. Before you start on that, you, you said something about uh, primary, uh, primary care. Right. Uh, is in, uh, the dental is included if, if, if the county is your primary caregiver right. or provider. Uh, does that mean that someone has to sign up and actually say that the county is, is your well, primary provider? Of technically, the way it works is you come in and you visit a doctor and they do a general exam and mm -hmm. say you're okay. And, and then basically, then you can set up an appointment to see one of our dentists or okay. our counselors. Yeah. Okay. We just want to be there. Um, we've discovered that more and more elderly people are in need of primary care providers. Oh, sure, uh, sure. And we want to be there for them. And so we've just said, okay, we've got this dental, we've got counseling, but to use those services, we ask that you make us your primary care provider. Okay. Uh, that doesn't mean they can't go someplace no, else periodically for a absolutely. specialist or whatever. Right, oh, absolutely. Uh, can they come in, is the first visit a a consultation or is it a thorough physical? How, how does that you can do it start? Either, you can do it either way. Uh, you can come in for a consultation where we will look at your income levels if you're wanting to get on some of the discounted prices. Uh, we'll look at your insurance. You know, we'll do uh, anything and everything we can. And there's really no charge for that uh, initial visit just to talk and see what we can do. Once we then move into an actual exam situation, that's when, when the, the charging starts and, and uh, extremely reasonable rates. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, other programs that the county provides or offers? Yeah, there's uh, several sort of sections. Uh, we do education and fitness. Uh, we have something called CDSMP, which is Chronic Disease Self-Management Program. Um, it's a unique uh, training situation. Uh, right now it's hosted in Prescott, uh, Cottonwood, but they've already got scheduled one in Chino, uh, one in Prescott Valley, and they're looking at setting up one of these classes in Prescott. Uh, and basically what it is, is it's, it's a, uh, I believe it's a 12-week program. It's free of charge. It's hosted by trained professionals who are, in many cases, um, people with chronic diseases. And what it does is it, it helps them develop the skills needed to cope, uh, to live on their own, deal with medication, healthy uh, eating, um, how to communicate with your family and medical professionals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so that's just a really neat 12-week program that's free of charge. Now, is this done with uh, just one-on-one, -on -one, or is it done with peers in it's, a group setting? It's a group or? setting, yeah, okay, because so. we want you to develop relationships with sure, other people with, sure. with those uh, same diseases or chronic is issues that you might have. Is that the same program that uh, Virginia Rodriguez is involved? It is. Okay, that is great. Virginia Rodriguez's now, program. And you're still trying to, to basically train trainers, too, right. aren't you? Exactly. That's a great yeah. program. Yeah, they we go through a, her into our office. Yes, it, yeah, she's so a wonderful fun. educator. Um, they've got a basic training and then they've got an advanced training, um, and they they just they do wonderful work mm -hmm. in the community. Mm -hmm. so, it's great. so that's one of them. Um, we have income in home care uh, for mm -hmm. those that are financially eligible. Uh, we have what's called trek about, which is sort of a walking, hiking. Uh, Can I go back to the in home yes. care? Uh, I believe a lot of the in home care provided by the county is for uh, vets. <clears throat> Yes. Is that correct? Yeah, the VA okay. is actually one of the organizations that sends us mm -hmm. uh, their people that, that mm -hmm. need in-home care. Uh, again, it's based on your income and, and your in, in your ability. Are right. you able to, to manage? Right. There's attendant care and there's personal care. Attendant right. care is basically when the family members around you help. And we do a little bit of training and we actually pay them to take care of you. Right. And, and the whole goal of this is to keep them out of the rest homes, the, sure, the hospitals, because sure, sure. that's where people want to be. They want to be at home anyways. Mm -hmm. And the personal care is where we actually hire caregivers to provide non-medical right, right. in-home care. Much that we do for the private sector. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, there's the truck about, which is the hiking. Uh, and it's really, there's varied levels of difficulty from the basic walk 
uh, to a more aggressive hike, and it's using our gorgeous uh, walking trails and paths. And Was that part of a fitness program? It or is. Is that it's, just a, it's, a, a companionship uh, socially then? No, it's actually part of Enhanced Fitness, which is a program developed to uh, to get the, the mature adults in this county up and active. Well, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but in a, in, a, in a way that is not threatening to them in any way, mm -hmm. and again, it's, it's based on levels of difficulty, what you're able to handle, um, and pushing them just a little bit to, to get up and mm -hmm. be active in the community. Now, are these, um, along the way, I'm going to ask you if any of these programs need volunteers. Uh, it, let's, <clears throat> let's talk about the hiking program. Uh, are those paid county employees that, that conduct those hikes? Or are they volunteers that come we, in? We have a very small group of educators um, within the county that are paid employees. And, and mm -hmm. most of the funding comes from grants um, provided by the state, private grants, and so on and so forth. But yes, we, we require or request a lot of volunteers. Um, within our medical reserve group, we have over 900 volunteers. But that's a small fraction of what we actually need. Um, these volunteers help out in programs like that in the health and fitness areas. But more importantly, when H1N1 came through and we had to, you know, take care of 50,000 people in a matter of a couple of days, these volunteers came out and really helped distrib distribute. They helped with communication, even traffic control. Um, so we are in desperate need. And it's just a great way for the, the senior community to be involved. Um, and we I do would think so. Yeah, we do a little bit of training, just, you know, kind of get them up to speed on some communication protocols, that kind of thing. And then, you know, and most of these are non-hospital employees, so that if we do need medical staff, we're not pulling from the hospital. Sure. It's a completely sure. unique, different Well, group. the hospital has a few hundred volunteers themselves, don't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. And yeah. some of them do cross over, but oh, typically sure. our volunteers yeah. are not hospital employees. Okay. Okay. Great. Well, thank you. So, uh, um, just to close the loop on that, if someone wants to volunteer with any program of the county, is there a number they can call and volunteer? Yes, uh, there are several phone numbers for the county, um, but uh, and I'll give out this this number again. Um, we have a, a central scheduling appointment for the general area uh, for Prescott, and that's nine two eight five eight three one thousand. And uh, I, my number is. Uh, 442-5509, that's 928-442-5509, mm -hmm. uh, which you're more than welcome to call and I can give you that information. Um, we do have an emergency contact info number that I, I'll give you in a couple okay. minutes. I'll track it but if people want to volunteer, they can call the 1000 number yes. and, and, and talk to someone there yes, about who to, talk, who to go to? Absolutely. Okay. There's a phone tree you can go through. Sure. Uh, okay. We're actually working on revamping that a little bit to make it a little more streamlined. But uh, yeah, we can we can get you to the right person. Okay, I wanted to get clarify the volunteers because it's often important to get that information out because yeah. many people want to be participate. Yeah, in, this in the medical volunteer. reserve corp is a, an amazing opportunity for the seniors, um, and it also uh, speaks to this um, the special needs uh, list. Basically, mm -hmm. we have a special needs shelter that we can set up in cases of an emergency, uh, or let's say um, we have massive earthquake heaven forbid, um, where the hospitals just can't handle all of the special needs, people, people that mm -hmm. are on oxygen, mm -hmm. they can't get mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. um, we'll actually set up a shelter for these special needs people, and we have what's called a special needs registry. Uh, and again, uh, we can give you that number afterwards okay. uh, that you Great. can call to be Great. put on that list. 